Hey, welcome to the Aerospace Tech Talks. We're here to bring you some of the biggest challenges in space and national security. I'm Kevin Bell, Senior Vice President of the Engineering and Technology Group at the Aerospace Corporation. Today, we're talking about an issue that affects everything from airline flights to everyday smartphone navigation, and that's GPS jamming and spoofing. GPS, or Global Positioning System, is something we all rely on, whether it's for driving directions, airline travel, or even just making sure our phone's clock is accurate. But bad actors have figured out ways to mess with these signals, the GPS signals, causing disruptions that can be dangerous and costly. Over the past few years, we've seen a huge increase in these incidences. And that's why experts across the government and industry are working to develop resilient solutions to mitigate jamming and spoofing of the GPS signals. To help us understand what's happening and what's being done about it, I'm joined by John Janeski, Director of the Digital Communications and Implementations Department here at the Aerospace Corporation. So John, tell me a little bit about the current state of GPS jamming and spoofing and what are, what are the trends we're seeing? Yeah, Kevin, we've seen a massive increase in the number of jamming and spoofing events worldwide. Uh, over the past uh, three years, we only saw about 10,000 cases, uh, but in the past year and over a period of about six weeks, we saw a jump to 41,000 cases, which, which is an incredible increase. Uh, it's gotten so bad in certain regions of the world, such as the Baltic Sea, airlines can no longer use GPS for uh, navigation while landing at certain airports. Wow. I remember just a few years ago, there were only like certain places in the whole world where you had any jamming, like Putin's summer vacation home. <laughs> um, but given it's so pervasive now, um, how how do we figure out what the health of the GPS signal is or where we're being jammed or spoofed? Yeah, so awareness is, is key and we're developing technologies to increase the user's awareness of what's going on in their local environment. Uh, we've developed a combination of satellite based sensors, ground stations, uh, and analytic, analytics platforms such as uh, the SPEAR team, uh, which is the space-based PNT uh, event analysis and response team led by Steve Lewis that goes out and identifies, characterizes interference events to inform the user of what's going on. Yeah, I've actually heard they've managed to pull in lots of um, proliferated LEO satellite uh, GPS receiver signals to determine globally in real time where all that jamming energy is. So that's a, so once I know where the jamming is, I mean, I still, I still can't navigate, right? So how do I, is there things I can do on my antenna side or something to help mitigate some of these issues? Yeah, so once you know where the jamming is and what type of jamming is occurring in, in your environment, then you can configure your PNT system to be more resilient to that. So the first line of defense is your antenna system, which uh, if it has multiple elements, it can null uh, jamming power in certain directions. Uh, and we, we've worked to increase the number of elements that are available to the, the, the community uh, on, on these antennas. The next line of defense is signal processing. So you can remove uh, jammers and interference using special signal processing techniques. Uh, and then if all else fails in, uh, on GPS, then you switch to uh, different types of PNT sensors and, and PNT sources uh, that are not being affected by the local threats. So tell me a little bit about that last one. I know that, um... You know, we can do a lot to try to overcome the jamming in the local environment, but if the L-band signal disappears with a really bad day in space or maybe a, a corrupt ground segment, um, what are the options? Yeah, so we, we've been doing a lot of work to uh, figure out ways to navigate off of these things called signals of opportunity, which are signals that are available in, in your local RF environment that may not be owned by the, the uh, user of that signal. So they can be anything from Europe's uh, Galileo signal to uh, Starlink's downlink signal. Uh, and we're working to figure out how to pull uh, reliable navigation observables off these signals that enable us to uh, use other parts of uh, the frequency spectrum to navigate. So how do you actually implement that? It seems complicated because there's multiple frequencies and you got to process it. What, tell me a little bit about what aerospace is doing to push that forward. Yeah, so depending on the type of signal of opportunity, we have to, we'll drive how hard it is to uh, pull navigation observables off of it. So uh, the first step is to be able to show you can do that reliably reliably, and then you need uh, awareness of uh, the signal's integrity, uh, as well as a trusted source of where the satellites are. Uh, and you can do all that through through special monitoring techniques. So kind of a matter of getting all that data on the back end to then help a, a, a software-defined system determine where it's at from the signals. That's incredible and, and really critical to make sure we've got 
continuous and 100% reliable navigation at any time. Um, so we're gonna continue to, to push to make sure that aerospace is on the forefront of looking at alternative, what we call alternative precision navigation and timing to make sure the nation's prepared. I wanna thank John Janeski for coming and explaining to us uh, the details of what's going on across the environment and some of the solutions that uh, the team is pursuing. Thank you.